Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this Thursday evening? Yeah, it is Thursday. It's free yeah. Friday. Free yeah. Friday. Friday yeah. Eve. Friday Eve. That's party time, right? <laughs> I don't know if the, what Thursday night. Thursday night used to be appointment television. Remember, like, when yeah. your Viver was on? And CSI. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, it, it did Friends, used to be. Friends yeah. was on Thursday nights. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were just so many shows that were that were like appointment TV, and uh, NBC was like ruled the world as far as like primetime television on Thursday night. But yeah, it, you know, now with in the streaming world, it's just like. I guess for for geekdom, I guess Wednesday nights has become appointment TV time. When, Tuesdays have also seemed to be where a lot of people put genre television. Tuesday nights, yeah, yeah. Um, especially on the CW. I don't know what it is about Tuesday night and Wednesday nights, but my appointment TV for the last two weeks is I finished Vincenzo on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Okay, Vincenzo is a K drama. It's my first K drama I've ever watched, and it is an hour and a half long episodes, and there were twenty. Wow! Now, naturally, I fast forward through all of the parts <laughs> that I don't care. For. Right, <laughs> the Belmont However, rule. <laughs> I was, I was pretty impressed. They, they did. I will say this is that when you watch it. Early on, you'll be like, okay, okay, this is interesting. Very um, different writing. Um, the the structure isn't the same. And then they start doing what I would call a, a dramatic trick and uh. um, how they frame certain plot points. And, um, and then they keep repeating that trick. But I was shocked that it took me until the very last episode to get tired of it. Huh. Yeah, because usually. for some reason, even though they kept repeating the same trick over and over again, I was still caught off guard every time they did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Well, that's cool. Well, you know, that shows the, the strength of the story because, you know, if they make you forget that they use the same plot point or dramatic trick over and over again, and, you know, and we and we, we, we are not shy about call, calling that out. Right. And that is, that, that, that gives great props to to the writers of that show to like cr- create such an engaging story that you you completely forget that they did that maybe a few weeks ago a couple episodes ago yeah and and the the final episode there are some images in that episode and some that i just i cannot get out of my brain mm. like the what what ends up happening I mean, just a little clarification about the plot. Essentially, Vincenzo is part of the mafia, the Italian mafia. And he gets caught up in a bunch of stuff when he goes back to Korea. And and just the, uh, the um, shall I say, the torture that is inflicted on some of the most sinister characters in this show, in that final episode. Like... I've never seen that in a movie about the mafia. Huh. <laughs> and so I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God, they're serious. <laughs> this is, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Huh. But but yeah, I've been I've been so caught up on that show that I um I'm looking at our chart. I watched all the shows that we're gonna talk about for better yeah. or for worse. Yeah. Um, but I didn't I did not really I watched this whole thing about DC and they released and Warner Brothers shared the Batman sizzle reel matrix four and talked about other movies that were coming in 2020. I'm kind of, well, I'm kind of like, I'm going to see the Batman. Yeah. I don't want to see any more footage. I really don't. Yeah. And you know, you're talking about Cinecon uh, that, that is going on this week and, the sizzle reel for Batman. Uh, basically, it sounds like, and, and it hasn't been released on the internet or anything like that. Basically, is this Cine- Cinecon is is basically the, the the 
the theaters trade group and mm-hmm. they had their big event in Vegas and this week all the studios have been there and of course the re- recurring theme through all the major studios is we are committed to the, the theater experience so you know so even Warner Brothers just like nope nope no 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 more day in theater you know HBO Max and theater release we're, we're, we're going back to the theaters in 2022 so you know that's one of the things but getting to the to the Batman I mean, really, I guess Pat Battinson and, and Reeves were there and they were just really talking about just reinforcing the things that some of the things we've already heard. Like, for example, it is going to be in the second year of Batman's journey as, as a vigilante in Gotham. And but one of the things that Pattinson said about uh, this project is that it's a real passion project for for Matt Reeves. And then uh, Matt mentioned that that this version is going to be different you know it's an emotional batman and it's going to be very different from some of the stories that we've seen on the big screen or uh, live action to date and so yeah so you know so it was, it was some good you know just a little small nuggets so, you know of course i think they're just saving up the, the good stuff until dc fandom of course uh and uh Pattinson also said that you know for for batman uh, the, his his crown fighting is very personal to him so so you know it was just a lot of you know good nuggets just to hold us over until until we get to dc fandom and then of course we got the matrix four which uh, they did apparently show a trailer again it hasn't been dropped but it, for for general consumption but uh yeah it sounds like uh, neo is uh into cat meets cat is back in the matrix <laughs> Yeah, in in this film, and and so you know, and, and and that franchise, you know, by the third film, I I had I, I had Matrix fatigue by the third film. Oh but, yeah. Uh, um, but I think, but from what I have heard about this from Cinecon, it it definitely had it definitely piqued my interest. Where I'm like, hmm, okay, you know, Neo is you know meets Trinity in a cafe instead of the red pill and the blue pill, and 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 you know, um, uh. We had other other elements, so I, I'm 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 actually look I'm actually looking forward to this one. Their own what if episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> their own what if exactly exactly yeah. Oh. But uh, yeah go, yeah but uh, yeah you know but there's been other things of Cinecon this week as far as uh, you know other news from of course Sony. <laughs> yeah. Sony, we'll we'll get to that news. <laughs> I want to get hit some of these smaller headlines. Yeah. Um, Succession three, Succession season three will return on October third. I I need to do a rewatch. Will. Yeah. I, was... I, I need to. It's been so long. Yeah. And um and I'm excited and I know Billions is coming back and finally finishing up their fifth season that got kind of. What it, however you want to call it, um, shortened, but mm-hmm. not even shortened because they didn't even finish, like, do a rewrite. They just, like, yep, that's the last episode we had, <laughs> we shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you when we see you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, definitely need to do a rewatch. And then on top of that, it was announced that The Flash – um, when they do come back with season eight, which we're seeing all of the set photos that the cast is back and they're starting to film, mm-hmm. um, there will be a five episode crossover, which will include Batwoman, Black Lightning, The Adam, Sentinel, Mia Queen, Ryan Choi, Damien Dark, and Earbard Thawne. And um, they add, added Tony Curran as Despero. Yeah. Um, out of all of those names, the Adam surprises me the most. Mm. Because I listened to, I watched the episode of Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah. Where he interviewed Brandon Ralph. Yeah. And Brandon talked about how, um, how his contract and how his whole storyline, like, ended. Yeah. And it didn't sound like it was on the best of terms. Yeah, that's that's a fair thing. I listened to the same interview and mm-hmm. yeah, and um and you know, the it seems like 
on the legends of tomorrow side in particular, uh, they've had some very weird protracted things because I know uh, Dominic Purcell also yep. had some issues with his contract. But um, yeah, I was I was surprised when I saw the Adam too, and and and, and frankly, I, if if Brandon was going to return, I was really hopeful that he would return as the um, return as Superman. But that's but you know, I guess we. We already had that with with Crisis, so they didn't want to dip into that one again. But um, and I guess Melissa's done, so I guess they ended up just pulling over uh, Shiler for for Sentinel. So yeah, what do you mean a CW doesn't want to like go go back to the same well again yeah. and again and again? <laughs> they never do that. Yeah, they never <laughs> do that. They never do that at all. They never do that at all. And of course, yeah. you know, we do. Yeah, and we. And we and we heard about Crest some time back. Uh, I think actually maybe the oh, maybe on Blurts in the Hood, or I think maybe Jay and, and and Winston actually were the ones who may have broke that news first about him, um, re- poss- you know, possibly returning for for season eight. Uh, as in that before we had details about the crossover, I think. Um, and then you know, it's gonna get postponed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I I keep also thinking about how. Last year, when they had to push back the start dates of the of the shootings and everything for the next seasons, um, they said, don't worry, we'll be back in 2021 in January with a huge crossover event. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I almost feel like this is probably what would have happened. Mm-hmm. And they just moved it, which... I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that woman in particular, she she's been through a lot. And yeah. so she's not the same character who, <laughs> who <laughs> they, they had last year. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That, and I, I'm glad I know, I think maybe it was in DC fandom or, or, or maybe in another publication or something where Javicia talked about the possibility of doing some crossover work and, you know, and of course, everybody was kind of it, it was kind of bearish about uh, um, talking about any kind of crossover, given given obviously the COVID and everything like that. But you know, I, I you know, I, I, I tweeted from our, our show account that uh, they really, the Flash just got to just stick the landing on this thing because I mean, they, yeah, you know, I, you know, I am like die hard ride or die with that show and they almost lost me this last season so they they really gonna have to do a, a, an excellent job out the gate this time around and not screw around like they did with this last season because yeah. one i think you know grant's only signed for one more year and if it gets kind of repetitive where he's kind of like and you know like you know and like steven i mean now he has his own kid Grant has his own kid, and if it's like repetitive and his interests start to go elsewhere, like Melissa's, for example, mm-hmm. then you know, buckle up, fans. This might be the last season. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's over. I think yeah. it's over. Call it while you still can. Go yeah. out with some grace. It's not about reaching season ten. Right. Um, just to say you reach season 10. Yeah. But the story has to be there. Yeah. Um, in some Marvel news, um, Letitia Leticia Wright injured, got injured on the Black Panther set. Um, poor thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It was only minor injuries, right? Right, right. She's actually been released from the hospital. So thankfully, uh, yeah, I guess they were doing some, I mean, even the principal photography, I think, is in Atlanta. They were doing some, work up in Boston and yeah, I think the stunt rigging like malfunctioned and yeah, she got some minor injuries that did require a you know, short visit to the hospital, but she thankfully is out and um, hopefully on the mend and uh, they can get back to back to work. Yeah. It's, it's not like Dylan O'Brien when he got run over by a car on set. Yeah. Yeah. True. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um and and I mean that that was the small Marvel headline and uh, Marvel is just um <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we all know what happened. We all know that somebody decided this weekend to to release 
a little little trailer that we've we've been anticipating um and uh, and so and so so they decided to that because it was re- scandalously released that yeah. that they would just let us have the whole thing but i call it i i know they were waiting for shang chi like that yeah. that trailer is gonna be in that so i'm not i'm not surprised yeah yeah. Um, but it was pretty funny to hear everyone talk about. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they, yeah, it, yeah. And given that, you know, and of course, a lot, you know, there are a couple of things because a lot of people had the theory August 23rd and then the whole one division thing, uh, all, you know, with the, with the heart in, in the first episode of, uh, one division, but really the Senate, it obviously we just both of us both completely missed it because I mean we're not we you know we don't work in the theater industry or anything but uh, I mean Cinecon was Monday and Sony had their presentation there that day so to your point given that they wanted the trailer to be a part of Shang Chi it made total sense that they were that they were probably planning on dropping it that Monday but someone did the you know and I hate it for the visual effects person who uh, yeah. <laughs> You like showed it to their source because their source, you know, some, you know, you're about to, you know, it's like, you know, trigger the, the, the TikTok, you're about to lose your job because, uh, I, you know, the, you know, the, the, the video, which I did watch, I, I, I was just like, okay, I'm not, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, it was like the video of the video of the video and it had the watermark. So I just felt so bad for that person that, you know, there's, should- their, that their source was, you know, betrayed their 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 trust like that. Yeah, yeah. What you know, I think that's that that is like I love how it instantly becomes old news though the moment you give us the full trailer and then yeah. everyone is just talking about that trailer because yeah. it's a damn good trailer. It is. It is. It is. I um Marvel Marvel is finally starting to. And I'm not, I, I shouldn't say finally. I think they are are understanding that these movies sell themselves. Mm-hmm. So they can get away with showing us just images that are larger than life mm-hmm. and, and not really give us context. Now, they gave us a lot, little bit more context here yeah. um, than in some of the other trailers that we've seen recently from Marvel. Mm-hmm. But I think that it it basically I felt like most of the trailer would probably fall within that first act. Yeah. Which makes me very happy and excited because I'm tired of seeing trailers where I'm like, that is so in the third act. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why am I seeing that now? Yeah, or or like the suicide, like, you know, we talked about a few weeks, a couple weeks ago, like the Suicide Squad gave away yeah. like all the great scenes, you know, and and so yeah, you're you're right. Uh, uh, that the the trailer definitely, you know, it was a teaser trailer, so we'll we'll, you know, we'll definitely get at least one more full trailer. And then, uh, and I hope, like to your to your point that you made last week when we talked about the Eternals. Hopefully, they won't like they'll just they'll just repackage what we've seen in you know little thirty second internet snippets and you know, during during TV shows and events and stuff. But don't give up too much more. Yeah. Uh, um, but I, it was, I it it really confirm things that we've heard mm-hmm. but and but at the same time it like you said these things sell themselves so i mean my ass is going to be in the seat most likely december 17th so mm-hmm. yeah i'm okay with you you know like with the eternals trailer for example giving me the context as far as like what's going on here yeah and you know and and really and I think with with this trailer, it, I think it also made a point to give us more context for Peter, mm-hmm. where he where we last left him as a reminder. Yeah. And and how that melds into all of this other phase four, mm-hmm. the the multiverse madness that is happening. 
Right. Um, and and more importantly, how it's going to be a different story than what we've seen in Into the Spider Verse. Yes. I know that was my my biggest concern when I yeah. first heard what they were looking at doing, and then all of these rumors. I'm just like, what? We're we're just going to get the live action version of Into the Spider Verse? We don't need that. Right. Um. But but this movie made it made it or this trailer made it very clear that no they're not doing that that is that is Miles' story this is Peter's story similar elements mm -hmm. but it's it's going to serve a different purpose in this narrative yeah. um, and and I I also I mean I personally I kind of forgot that by the end of the second Spider-Man movie, everyone know, knew who Peter Parker was. Um, and, and, I, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So the snap did not, <laughs> 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 nothing rewrote that, okay. Yeah, yeah, now, cause, yeah, cause let's see, cause Far From Home was right after the snap, right? Right, yeah. and so that's another thing that's kind of, I'm trying to figure out is if, if these like the time is so interesting to think about okay when exactly did wandavision take place when did falcon and winter soldier take place and then also more importantly what is the timeline with loki <laughs> yeah yeah so i think if i recall then this is from the official disney plus site WandaVision takes place, I think, if just a short period, maybe a couple weeks or so, right? At, uh, you know, from the when people from the the, the final snap. Mm -hmm. uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think, happens several months from that. Loki, Loki happens post snap as well, but I can't recall right off the top of my head where it where well, in the, the the Loki verse. Um, Time does work differently on the TVA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess it depends on you know, when are you looking talking about Loki? Because part of it, part of Loki, is clearly uh, pre-snap, you know, yeah. right after, right after from the events in Endgame, uh, and and then part of it is whenever he returns to after the finale is yep. post-snap. So yeah. I think. So I think it depends. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with that one, but um, yeah, but you're you're right. Uh, with your getting back to your point about the uh, not retelling the Spider Verse, I, I I was worried about that too. Definitely clear as a standalone movie. And then of course, you know, speaking of Wandavision, of course we 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 have our favorite uh, uh, demonic presence theories popping up again. <laughs> yeah. Which, I, I mean, thank God for the Inner Geekdom show on SCN because they, they continue to remind me that yeah. there's, a, there's a reason why Mephisto is more than likely never going to yep. appear in the MCU. And it's because yep. of the laws. Yeah. <laughs> so go do your homework and yeah. then come back with us and talk about Mephisto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a huge ass market that you know, where you know over a billion people live. <laughs> that, yeah, won't won't allow that character. So and yeah, and it's funny how you know I was watching some, another one. People were like, well, what about well, what if it's they do it this way? I'm like, no, China ain't gonna allow it, y'all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That I mean, Feige's gonna try to get away with as many nods as he can. Yeah. Without being detected, but that's as close as we're gonna get. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I I mean I I just I don't think that we're ever gonna actually see Mephisto, and that's okay because one thing Marvel the MCU has consistently done well is taking these storylines and making it work for the MCU. Exactly. Um, so it's it's yeah. never going to be exactly what it was, um, but the overall moral of the stories are going to remain the same. Thank you, thank you. Um, 
And and on that note, let's talk a little bit about more about Marvel and all of their stories as we got our third episode of What If this week. Yeah. Um, different episode again, where mm -hmm. it's more about what happens if we lose Earth's mightiest heroes and a reminder that the Avengers were assembled within a matter of a week. Yeah. Just like God, seven days, that's all yeah. it took. That's all it took. <laughs> <laughs> my my one thing about this episode is um, the middle part was with um, with Natasha. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah. I didn't even remember Hope's name and who she was in Ant Man, but I I was just just because of the way like Natasha was being thrown about, I'm just like, what if it's Ant Man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whenever I got the hope when they mentioned hope, I yeah, I got I picked up on that too. I was like, huh. Uh but but you know, but it was still they still did a great job of like doing the head pick and with with ended up having Hank um Pim as yellow jacket though i mean it it, it, it that was it, you know so even though i was like okay we're gonna get some ant-man here I mean, you know so because i mean it's not, now we're getting into the phase two and phase three of of the avengers uh but uh of the mcu but no they i, I thought they they really s sold that well i really like this episode actually i'll have to i have to say this one was to date was my favorite one. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I was super and and I even and I have rewatched and that's even after rewatching the, the the first two. Uh and I and and so I, it just seemed for me when I first heard about this series and and the what if it, it really lived to me. This episode really li lived up to that. What if scenario and not that, not that last week's episode didn't, I mean, it did as well, mm -hmm. but I think, but I think really taking, you know, the, the, the getting back to the, I guess the OG Avengers as far as the MCU and, and not just going beat by beat of, retelling that story but telling the original story and and then you know and, and it building it on like a murder mystery right i think was what what which is i think what sold it for me was it was that murder mystery element when you know when, when tony dies <laughs> he gets murdered there and 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 then you know the next with clint and everything else it, it, it th that that was what really like kept me captivated from start to finish because I was just trying to find all the little various clues in, in this episode to see, you know, who actually, it was a great whodunit. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a fair point. I mean, I, I think I think with What If is that they, they have to, part of it is nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Part of it is, is rem telling, c creating a story that where you're reminded about the the former stories and the MCU reality that you know, mm -hmm. and then how whether it be a swap a character swap or a character who technically is the same but suddenly finds himself on a spacecraft. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Instead of on the throne. Yeah. Um, and then or or this situation where it's it's a decision made by a character who doesn't even technically appear in the episode mm -hmm. um, because it's hope joining shield. It's which probably means that there were other choices that led up to that right. problem by her father and the fact that he was wearing that yellow jacket suit. Mm -hmm. So maybe something else happened. So a few different decisions that p put Hank Pym on this path that ultimately ended up where he he killed off most of the original OG Avengers that we know. Mm -hmm. Granted, even if that happens, 
Avengers run deep, okay? Yeah. There's yeah. multiple Avengers at this point. Right. And so so yeah, take out Tony. Okay. We still got Cap. He's just mm -hmm. he's just a bit icy right now. And yep. then Captain Amer Captain Marvel can come down and probably just like put everyone in their place. So, <laughs> yeah. so <Exactly>. it's fine. <laughs> yeah. it, it, exactly. Exactly. And and I and I guess that's the thing with with this series. And so you know, I know it's an anthology, and and it will be around for a, a second season. So I'm wondering if we will you know, pick up on some of these beats later this first season, or will we get some of the, you know, the second part of this in, in season two, uh, you know, with, with Cap coming off ice and... and, I, uh, and I and, they do it in an unexpected way. Like yeah. you're starting to watch a what if scenario play out, mm -hmm. and you think like, oh, well, they changed this, and so this is in our normal timeline, or potentially in our normal timeline. Um, and then, so so this person is going to show up, and then all of a sudden you see Cha Cha, and yeah. you're just, oh, 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 this is taking place in that timeline. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. those kind of movement um, changes. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. And, you know, and given that uh, we had Loki and and is basically setting up his kingdom <laughs> as now that uh, he has cut the deal with Nick Fury and stuff, then, uh, yeah, I think you know, that to your point, that's a, a, a great way for them to to be like. Throw, throw things for a loop just when we think that, oh, yeah, it's going to unfold this way. Actually, no, it's going to unfold that way. But the other thing I, I liked about this episode, too, uh, that I was noticing when I was watching it is this time we really had more of the, the presence of the Watcher in this episode. It's like, so fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, because in the other two, and, and maybe, you know, and I guess if I do another rewatch, uh, you know, maybe I'll see, I think there may have been a few, an instance or two, maybe in the in the second episode. But but with this one, I mean, you know, those eyes were like peering down. I mean, I think I remember like the one scene with like mm -hmm. with, with uh, um, Coulson driving across the desert and, you know, the watchers there. And there's a couple other ones, too. But it it. It, it, I don't know if this will be something that they will carry forward in, in other other shows, but it, 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 I think with this one in particular, having that omnipresent watcher there vis visually, instead of just narrative narrative rating in the background, really added the air of like creepiness and then you know what's really going on with the celestial is he really about to interfere in events and or is he just going to let things play out yeah I, well that that is the the through line which I, that has my cur curiosity is that mm -hmm. the how long will the watcher remain just watching mm -hmm. and and what what where where could we potentially see uh, Jeffrey Wright just pop up in yeah. Phase Four? Um, because they they've introduced him for a reason, right? Right. And they're introducing a lot of people for reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and given, yeah, yeah. I mean, because they, you know, we've had various teases of other Celestials, and you know, we got and we're going to have the big ones coming up later this year with the Eternals. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so. Let's move on to Titans. Yes. We were talking during the pre-show. We, we seem to have different opinions about this episode. We do. And, and, and my opinion is that they should have had a different a B plot. Mm. Um, they had an opportunity to take the flashbacks about Jason and what really happened and how he became Red Hood mm -hmm. and parallel it with something with Dick, like mm. something going on with Dick. And they could have 
really shown like this this brotherly parallel between these two characters. Yeah. Um, and so that's all I could think about was just how I I honestly half of this stuff I didn't really care about. <laughs> like <laughs> that's before I I want to move on of what they're gonna do now. Yeah. Um, that's great that scarecrow, but I just I did I. Did, flashbacks episodes are very hard to get right yeah um and and part of the re reason is an, another reason why i kept thinking like this episode was just a waste was because um i kept thinking about last season and the aqualad mm. where they purposely gave us flashbacks about donna and and aqualad's relationship because of how it impacted the ending moment yeah. um, and that loss. And we as the viewers needed to feel that with the other characters. So we needed to understand the history there yeah. um, more so than ever. And then in this episode, it, it was just like, we're going to take a break from all of this momentum we've have going for us right now and show you the, the, the real episode one of this season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, great, classic yeah. Titans. You, you need you need to work on how you organize your season. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I, that's a very fair point. And 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 while you were while you were talking about that, it, it that they definitely fell back into some some of the problems that structural problems that plague the first season in particular mm -hmm. uh, with this with this show. I but I, see but I guess I guess the reason why I enjoyed it was it up until this point I mean you know and obviously spoiler alert if you haven't watched it yet you know you may want to jump ahead to uh, Star Girl but you know obviously you know we called it with the Lazarus Pits <laughs> classic uh, classic. <laughs> Uh, but you know, but that was just kind of like, okay, we kind of, you know, I kind of, you know, that, that wasn't, um, didn't bother me so much is, but I think it was, for me, it was really getting into the psychology for why he turned into Red Hood. And I, and I agree with you. I think it would have been more effective instead of having the exposition between Jason and Bruce and the whole brother thing and father and sons and it, it, it would have been better if they had had a B story to really flesh that out with Dick mm -hmm. and, and, and Jason and, and show and show those dynamics and, and we've seen this and I guess I mean I guess some of that has been built up in prior seasons but but I think it, it you know, but for newbies who maybe haven't had a chance to watch those prior seasons, the exposition to me what falls flat. Right. Uh, and there's and, also another Robin character who we got a glimpse of in the very first episode this season. Right, right. Haven't seen since. Right. That they could have returned to and done some parallel work as well because we know he's going to come up later on this season right exactly that's that's a very good point about tim drake we we haven't seen that and then and i guess it does connect some to i guess it was the second episode where we had when dick was looking through the computers and yep saw the potential new robins that bruce was was thinking about bringing on board mm -hmm. so so i i know so I think I think that's the the thing that did work for me, as far as some of the exposition and the other things that were going on in the episode, as far as Jason's journey, and and the counseling and 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 and, and Bruce, you know, taking Robin away from him, and, and all those things. He, you know, I think Bruce realized where he messed up with Dick, and he was, you know, but. And he was trying to do to, to be a better quote unquote father for Jason. But unfortunately, Bruce, as as the counselor rightly noted, 
is already on a borderline, you know, personality disorder in and of itself, and is a very broken individual because of what happened to him. You know, because again, when he had this whole scene of them talking about family, was where his parents were murdered. Right. So, you know, Bruce is a broken person trying to help these other broken people, and 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 with with Dick thing you know dick realized that i gotta get away from, i gotta get out of gotham and so he went to detroit and 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 established his own life there and then later san francisco the titans right but but i think with all three of these characters they remain broken because of that that point that leslie leslie brings up is that is that jason jason doesn't really he he's free when he wears the mask. Mm-hmm. True, but he's he doesn't know how to live without the mask, and that's mm-hmm. and Bruce has never figured that out, and and I think that's what they're getting at also with Dick is that Dick doesn't know like he may have given up being Robin right but in the first season we saw that even though like he he was still fighting crime regardless of where he goes, um, and now that yeah. his wife. Um, Nightwing he's just he he's still in a mask at yeah. the end of the day so so how how do these three people who are broken realize that the mask is such a crutch mm-hmm. um, that they before they can they really have to learn how to live without it in order to to be a um, a full person a few mm-hmm. full human yeah yeah that's true that's true that i mean they that that and I, and I, and again i think that's that exploration of that and at this particular point in the season i think it was important because i think it's it it's it, it answers the questions that we all had what you know, what led jason down this path to work with the scarecrow and right. And and, and then again, it, therapy session. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. did like his his relationship with Molly. I did too. Um, and I yeah. I was I was glad that they didn't kill her in mm, one yeah. of the scenes. <laughs> yeah. I was very worried about that. I'm like, really? Oh man. Yeah, yeah. But but I I I'm curious to see when she pops up again. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And how that will work on getting getting Jason back. Right, right. Getting Jason back. Yeah, because you know Red Hood ultimately becomes an antihero, mm-hmm. and and so I think this. Yeah, I think your your point is well taken. That if she had been killed, then then we would we would have lost Jason forever at that point. Uh, and but you know about the the this the. Jason's wanting to get back at, at Bruce because Bruce is again failure to connect on a on a on a on a, on a level of normal human beings and who who don't hide behind masks really you know really resonated with me and it, and it makes you know we all you know we kind of suspected that he was working with the scarecrow to begin with. Uh, to, to to take this learn how to, to take this drug to um, not be afraid, but it 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 but seeing him do it, seeing it, I was like you know I know the title episode was Lazarus. I made it my notes. I was like more like Judas, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, because you know seeing that betrayal of that because of of all the things that have, have transpired up to date, uh, it, you know again. I think sets up the back half of the season, and 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 this was actually the one episode. You know, I haven't been a big fan of this version of Bruce Wayne, but this episode this week actually, I was like, you know, this version of him is actually was a good bit of casting because this version of an older, more introspective Bruce, this you know that. 
this actor, he, he carries that version of Bruce Wayne off pretty well. And I think this was probably his strongest outing up as Bruce to date that I've seen in a series. Uh, there can only be one Bruce Wayne, and I haven't seen him yet, but I'm pretty yeah. sure I will in March. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. You know, it's, d- despite me not liking this episode, I, as usual, most often when I come into a discussion with you, Will, and I recognize that we're on opposite sides of the episode, mm. I, th- I feel as though you don't com- convince me that it's better, yeah. but your points and takeaways always make me be like, yeah, now that we've talked about it, there were some merits, more merits than I originally thought, um, yeah. because there were... W- it was a good explanation exploration of of Jason Jason's mentality and how he views um the mask and that mantle of Robin mm-hmm. um and and we'll see what happens from there um considering yeah. he's still afraid of his big brother he still is yes he is yeah. <laughs> um now the, uh, then the last episode that we're going to talk about, we we pretty much, I think, have the same opinion about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't think anybody can convince me that this episode of Stargirl was just, it was bad. Um, it was surprised me how quickly it went. Mm-hmm. Um, because usually bad episodes of television drag on. Yeah. But, but I just felt like, I mean, we meet Johnny... Next thing we know, Mike has a pen. He's yeah. doing some shit, and then and then we're suddenly surrounded by um by the shade and shadows, yeah. mm-hmm. and and then we get a little tease that the shade has been a good guy the whole time. Well, not the whole time, but he's a good guy in this story. Um, end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> like what. <laughs> Pretty much, you, you you summed it up very well. I don't have much more to say. Well, I mean, there were, you know, there were, yeah. This episode, it, I, I think this is by far, for me, is yeah, in, in this young series, and not, not, not meaning the characters' ages, but just in, in, as far as where we are with it. I felt this is definitely what I feared when it was going to go CW full-time. <laughs> Yep. Uh, because I felt like I was like, where, what happened to the the decent writing writers room this week? Because uh, y'all, had, this was a, I think it was, it felt like it was one of those episodes that whenever they when they had the pitch and they they unfolded it and were like, okay, let's roll with this. It probably sounded better on the page than in the execution. I I think I I agree, but I think where they're struggling, season one, they were able to set up half of their season with with Courtney forming the Justice League, mm-hmm. on top of Courtney becoming her own as Star Girl, yeah, on top of introducing us to the Injustice League, and setting up a really good villain. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they killed that villain. At right. the end of the season, yeah, and they dismantled this league, and so we know all these characters, and and they're they're teasing Eclipso, yeah, and Cindy also, but mm-hmm. they seem to like also want to keep it, and I'm just, I'm like, you need to pick up the pace, yeah, because right now there there isn't there are not too many surprises and. And the characters just seem to be stuck where, yes. where we're we're like Courtney. We're like, okay, you guys need more bad guys. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, you need more good guys too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, yeah, I never thought I'd be like rooting for having a, a villain of the week, but uh, they they need some they need something to get the momentum back because I, I felt like this episode was kind of trading water. Yeah, I, I I also think that the with the Beth, um, I'm I'm gonna blank on the, the, a lot of their names, but with with all of the Justice League members, 
is that I think they need to start focusing more on those stories. I mean, it was a very, like, it felt almost misplaced, um, that moment between Beth and um, Ricky. Yeah. In, in the shop when she explains to him what, what's going on with her parents. It, was, it felt like a very heartful moment, but I'm just mm-hmm. like, where was the build up to that? Because yeah. I know we saw some stuff in last week's episode with Beth, mm-hmm. but it just, it didn't feel like it was a cohesive arc for her. And, 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 and we're seeing things going on with Ricky too in the woods. Yeah. And, and then Yolanda's kind of all over. And I just, I feel like, those characters, like they, they're they're also withholding on on interesting arcs that they could do with each of them for yeah. some reason. And and Courtney, I've been over for a very long time, but guys, the show cannot just be about Courtney and all the stupid stuff she does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 running into that problem of like we have a supporting cast and and, and you know thinking of. So you're thinking about our discussion with Titans, and one of the things that I think is working well with this season is you know, finding you don't you know it's not necessary to if you don't have a good meaty B story for your supporting characters, then it's okay for them not to be in the episode during a week. You right. know, you know, find the find a reason for them to go off to do X, Y, or Z. Right. And I think, you know, and Titans is doing that well this season. But I think Stargirl is running into the Flash problem where you have these supporting characters, but you're not figuring out how to, to, to as, you, as you rightly noted, how to use them. And then you have these very heartfelt moments because that moment between Beth and Rick were like clearly a, a very important thing given that she was dealt with, you know, finding, a, finding a, the, the paperwork for her parents' uh, divorce. Mm-hmm. And it did just kind of like, oh, we're just going to drop this in here. And then we'll just quickly run to something else. Right. Uh, and, and it was like, uh, I, I just felt that, you know, I, I, again, I, I'm feeling like Beth is being criminally underutilized this season. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I know it's only, we're only, what, three episodes in. But, I mean, give give the girl some real work. Because she's one of the, I, I, of the supporting characters, I've, I, She's been one of the more fascinating ones that I've liked since, you know, the first season. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I I like what they're doing with Chuck and mm-hmm. her not not only like her reaching her breaking point, but yeah. I'm just I just hope she gets an episode. Yeah. Um, I felt like last season, especially after they did all of the character introductions, they were still able to have a Beth B plot or a Ricky C plot um, mm-hmm. that that was cohesive. Yeah. So so that you understood what their what their journey was during the final battle yeah. with and Justice League and all of the pairings made stuff and that's that's another thing they when you got a large cast it's all about pairings mm-hmm. and the pairing can't just be for one scene it has to be like three scenes, five scenes and, and work in, in conjunction with whatever's happening in the A plot. It's just, yeah. uh, this episode, very forgettable. I'm glad yeah. we met Johnny Thunder. We understand the pen. Yep. We also see potentially why Cindy is interested in Mike Dugan, not yep. sexually, not sexually. Well, uh, but interested in joining the new Injustice Society, which is another thing. Why yeah. why aren't we getting introduced to all those people? Like, come on! Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, that you know, you, you drop this, you drop this ISA thing, and then you just kind of like left it there. I mean, uh, it was good to you know connect the dots between the Shade and and Eclipso, uh, even and you know, and, and I think also. Uh, it was one of the things I did like about the episode uh, w- was how they did handle the storyline with Mike and realizing that you know, being this in a, a superhero is, 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 is not as easy as it looks. So I thought that was one of the effective that that was one of the things they did 
well in in this episode and then uh him learning that lesson and 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 really being like well you know pat pat was right and 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 finding a new home for uh for johnny thunder and thunderbolt uh in particular with uh jakeem i guess uh, mike's friend so you know so maybe maybe that's where we will get that potential um, Trojan horse moment with with Eclipso and utilizing Mike to 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 mess with the Justice Society. Yeah, maybe. I mean that the the, the I like the scene where they um, Thunderball and and um, God, I'm forgetting his name, but um, Mike Mitch- or. Not Mike Dugan, the Pat Pat. Oh, Pat that conversation about yeah. Mike and why did why did Thunderbolt choose him? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, Thunderbolt, it, it's such a it's not really a superpower because he is drawn to people or kids who need a friend and feel yeah. isolated and alone, which oftentimes is the antithesis to what becomes a villain um, because of that isolation and that Mm -hmm. feeling like they're the outcast. So I, I, I'll be interested to see if potentially this was kind of like a, um, a false call where, Mm -hmm. where Mike thought, Oh, I'm the new Thunderbolt when really, no, he's something else. Mm -hmm. Um, as the Thunderbolt can can technically call on whoever he wants, as long as they they feel a certain way about their their world and their reality. Yeah, yeah. So so very interesting. Um, we'll see. I mean, we're in it for the long haul. There's going to be some stuff coming up in the next few weeks where Star Girl might get put back on the <laughs> back, back burner, but. Um, for right now, we're we're sticking to her. And um, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me on Twitter at Cena. No, you can't. You can find me on Twitter at S.J. Belmont, S-J-P-E-L-M-O-N-T. <laughs> But please do follow our crew on Twitter at Cena Nerd. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night. Geek out. You're welcome.